Today we take a look at the GD XMAX 3. I got the XMAX 3 from ZBanks for testing and have to say that it really surprised me. The product description reads like it's too good to be true. There had to be a big catch somewhere, which unfortunately is not uncommon. A huge Core XY 3D printer with clipper, a large filament compatibility and many other practical features at a fair price. Usually the catch then hides in poor workmanship, constant software bugs or print quality that is difficult to bring under control. But even during the first few test prints it became clear to me that this printer has a lot of potential and I'm very excited to see what other printers GD develops in the future. But before I show you its features and print performance I get to the few drawbacks I found in my test. Because the only thing that really bothers me about the XMAX 3 is the filament holder on the back. I understand that from a design standpoint it makes total sense to hide the filament on the back, but then it is usually very impractical to change the filament. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think most users will want to replace the 3D printer with its back to the wall. Since the XMAX 3 is quite large, it can be very difficult to get to the filament. Another small drawback is that the hood on top of the 3D printer can only be closed by applying a bit of brute force. But since the XMAX 3 is built like a tank, there's nothing wrong with a little violence to help it along. Now let's get to the good parts of the XMAX 3. Since the XMAX 3 comes completely pre-assembled, assembly basically only consists of removing the transport locks and the rest of the supplies from inside the printer. All moving parts of the printer are firmly protected inside with cable ties against uncontrolled movements. The XMAX 3 has a flexible print bed with a special coating that creates good print bed adhesion for most filaments. Such flexible print beds are magnetic and are held in place only by magnets in the print plate. The problem with this is that it is often difficult to position the print bed accurately. Therefore, I always find it very convenient to have small guide rails mounted on the printing plate where the print bed can simply snap into place. While this is not a spectacular feature, it makes daily use of the printer much easier. Of course, the XMAX 3 also has automatic print bed leveling. A sensor is installed in the print head that measures the distance between the nozzle and the print bed at several points. The values obtained in this way compensate for the inclination of the print bed during printing. One advantage, probably resulting from the stable Core XY structure, is the lack of adjusting knobs under the print bed. So you don't have to manually level the print bed as you do with most other 3D printers. The only thing you have to do manually is adjusting the Z offset. After the print bed has been leveled, the menu guides you through the other safe calibrations that are possible with Clipper as firmware. The first one is the input shaper. This generates vibrations in the print head that occur at high print speeds. The data is analyzed so that the vibrations can be avoided or compensated. With the input shaper, much higher print speeds are possible without the typical print errors such as ringing or ghosting that would normally occur at such high print speeds. The print volume of the XMAX 3 is 325 x 325 x 315 mm. With this print volume you can even print large objects in one piece. One of the big advantages of the XMAX 3 is its great filament compatibility. To ensure that even exotic filaments can be printed without errors, however, a closed print volume is required and some also demand a heated print volume. The heating manages up to 65 degrees Celsius and at the same time filters harmful gases out of the air with an active carbon filter. In addition to the setting in the slicer, the temperature of the enclosure can of course be set directly via the menu even during printing. The included drying box for filaments actually surprised me when I unpacked it. I had already looked into the printer a bit beforehand, but I must have overlooked this brilliant feature. There are filaments that are so hygroscopic that they soak up the moisture from the air. Certain types like nylon do this in a very short time, depending on the humidity of course. It can therefore happen that the print quality changes during a print due to the absorbed moisture. The first time the handling is a bit complicated, but on the back of the dry box every step is explained in detail. It is also great that the filament is sealed off from the outside world until it reaches the extruder. The drying box has a lid with a rubber seal and the filament is fed through a PTFE tube that is plugged directly into the filament sensor. For high print speeds and excellent print quality it is important that the 3D printer is stable and has as little vibrations as possible. Therefore the Core XY construction is popular for such 3D printers. In this frame structure the print bed moves on the z-axis and the print head moves on the xy plane. In addition, the construction of the XMAX 3 is so robust that it does not immediately start to wobble like a washing machine in the spin cycle during printing at high speeds. The high filament compatibility is probably one of the most important advantages of the XMAX 3. 
In addition to the heatable enclosure, temperatures of up to 350 degrees Celsius for the nozzle and 120 degrees for the print bed and the dry box, there are also two different hot ends and nozzles included. A copper nozzle for most filaments and a hardened steel nozzle for abrasive filaments with carbon fiber or glow-in-the-dark particles. After assembly, leveling and the input shaping, the first thing I did of course was to print a 3D Benji at 600 mm per second without doing any calibrations beforehand. The result after only 14 minutes of printing was not too bad at all. And after some calibration of the retraction and the print temperature, the print quality was perfect. If you are interested in the XMAX 3, you can find a link to the printer in the video description or on the pinned comment. Thank you very much and I am out.